Hi, my name is Deb Enright and this is Money Matters. Thank you for joining us. And as always, thank you to Daryl Thompson of Raymond James for his generous sponsorship of our Money Matters program. Today we want to celebrate a smashing success. This spring, we let you in on one of the best kept secrets in the district. We hoped to showcase the incredible strength within our schools that ignites the imagination of our students, brings smiles to all our parents, and stretches our faculty to provide new and unique opportunities for all of our students, from kindergarten through their senior year of high school. WCS showcased our district-wide fine arts program at the Franklin Theater and the Factory. We will check in with the visionary of this wonderful opportunity, our own fine arts curriculum specialist, Melissa Dufershoe, to see just how successful the festival was and what plans are developing for next year. We will also introduce you to a brand new summer program for rising juniors and seniors created by two of our WCS ambassadors. Their program, Youth Philanthropy in Motion, combines Belmont University, the TV show Shark Tank, the Center for Nonprofit Management, the United Way, High Hopes, and Mercy Community Healthcare together for 15 students in a whirlwind program. We have a lot of ground to cover, so stick with me through this break and prepare to hear about the first ever WCS Fine Arts Festival as Melissa Dufershoe joins me. We will be right back with more Money Matters. When sharing the road, reaction time is important. Motorists should reduce their speed and avoid tailgating, especially in bad weather. Cyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as motorists. They should travel in the same direction on the right hand of the road and obey all traffic signals. Observing these rules provides predictability for both motorists and cyclists. Remember, same roads, same rules, same rights. And welcome back to Money Matters. Melissa Dufershoe is the WCS Fine Arts Curriculum Specialist and the driving force behind our first ever Fine Arts Festival. In her second year here at WCS, Melissa's energy and focus continue to strengthen the fine art offerings and opportunities for our students. Melissa, it's great to have you back at Money Matters. Well, thank you. Great to be here as always. We said the last show that we would have you here so we could talk about um, the phenomenon now, which is <laughs> the Fine Arts Festival. So let's just get started. Let's talk about what your overall impression was of the festival. Well, I think it was a great success. I was um, I was really pleased with the with the turnout on Saturday. Um, I wish I'd had a way to count the number of people, but I would say we had hundreds, if not well over a thousand people there, and um, parents, students, of course, but there were also people there who just came to see the performances and people who came by accident. So it was really wonderful, wonderful exposure for our teachers and our students, and I think. I think everybody had a really great time. I, I know they I know they did. I was there right at the very beginning and you could just feel the energy and I'm sure that it carried through the entire day. It's just such a great idea. Talk to me a little bit about how you reached out to people in the community to get involved first. Well, I did a lot of door to door and I would just call up people and, and walk into their businesses and, and just ask them, do you want to be a part of this? Um, and I was so excited when the factory jumped on board and said, yes, we want this here. It's a, it's a great fit for what we're doing. We couldn't have asked for a better venue, but, um, but our sponsors that we had um, just called up some of our local businesses, such as uh, Chef's Music and Gallery 202. and. Uh, and they jumped on board and said, yes, this is something that we want to be a part of. That's wonderful. Now, I, I know because we've talked a little bit since the festival about the follow-up you've done, which I think is really smart. So you asked the folks in the factory, the vendors and everybody who were there, 
that this was going to happen and if they would kind of play along with us. So give me some of their reflections about being involved, even though if it was kind of just to open up their doors, but how did the festival, how did bringing those thousands of people into the factory affect their business? Well, you know, that's a great question. And um, I had a, a lot of really positive feedback from from things like, you know, it gave us exposure to people who don't normally come down to the factory, as well as some businesses, three businesses in particular, that had record sales that day, including, of course, the ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they were going crazy. Oh, that's wonderful. So um, tell me where people came from. Well, we had people from all corners of the district, from all the way up north in Fairview to down south from uh, Bethesda Elementary, um, Spring Hill area, um, representing the Page District, Page area, and, and way out west, we had the Hillsboro folks, um, and of course, right in Franklin as well. That's wonderful. Um, I'm sure you spoke with parents about what it maybe meant to them, but as you watched some of the parents' faces as they were watching their little one, or even maybe their senior who's doing, you know, singing in public maybe for the final time or, or at least until the, the final choir concerts are. Um, did they share anything with you or what did you see on their faces? Well, I've gotten a lot of feedback since then that parents were just really excited to be able to see not only their kids, but other programs as well. Um, and, and some of them saw some of our after school programs and got excited about what other schools are doing and are wanting to do things to expand the fine arts at their own schools as volunteers. Oh, that's wonderful. So it, it kind of worked um, to create maybe other ideas in terms of strengthening some of the programs that they have on the school level. Absolutely, yeah. Did you talk to any parents who maybe were in the younger grades and they saw what the big kids are going to be doing? Well, I didn't have a whole lot of conversations with some of the parents specifically like that, but I do know that um, a lot of the parents and some of the teachers had their kids stay to watch some of those older kids, um, just kind of as a way to say, you know, this is where we're starting right now, and, and, and this is what you can be doing as you get older, whether it was in the school that that student will be attending later on or just an, old, you know, an older group of kids so that they yeah. can have an idea. It's like, this is, this is what a young violin player sounds like, and this is what an 11th grade violin player yes. sounds like. Hold out there, mom, it does get better. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I noticed all over the place in these beautiful grids, or screened grids, I'm not quite sure if I'm using the right term, art from all grade levels, That uh, some paintings, um, but all 3D as well. I think one of the things we actually tweeted it out was the the thousand cranes, origami cranes, that were done by an elementary school. So talk to me about the visual art component. I was so excited about the visual art component. For, um, for so long, our teachers have not had the opportunity to display the variety of work that they are producing. We just haven't had the space for that kind of installation outside of their own schools. And so they've only ever been able to do specific sizes of two-dimensional artwork. But we do so much beautiful sculpture and, and things like that. And like you said, the crane installation, it, I mean, people walked beautiful. by all day and thought it was a professional installation at yes. the factory. It was done by fifth graders. It was beautiful. It was incredible. But the, the three-dimensional artwork that we were able to include was was just so wonderful um, that we were able to put these little shelves on the grids that we had and 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 display that and we had a beautiful big basket in the middle of the uh, factory where we could place um, some of the larger pieces and and so it really allowed us to show the uh, broad spectrum mm -hmm. of our art curriculum that it's more than just this one style that we do but we have kids that are really talented in many, many areas. I love that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about theater. Did, am I correct in that A school, did they write something for the festival or performed um, a piece or a skit or a scene for the festival? There was a school, they did, um, they actually did two performances. One was a prepared piece um, that they had been studying and then another one was one that they had uh, written themselves. It was a high school group, Page High School, and they wrote a particular piece and they performed that. Um, it was a uh, 
small group, uh, three or four kids, I can't remember how many, um, that they prepared. But we also had, on the other end of the spectrum, we had 20 or 30 kids from uh, Woodland Middle School and then Ravenwood High School do selections from their musicals. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so as you think about the next festival, which I'm sure you've already <laughs> started planning, tell me, is there some new thing you might try or some change that you might bring into the next festival? Well, I hope to get more performers involved um, and possibly reach out to some of our other arts, some of the media arts, um, maybe uh, involve the culinary arts more. Um, and I would, What a great idea. So they, Summit High School Culinary Department did provide the um, the desserts for our sponsorship event on Friday night, but, but maybe a way to expand that and to expand on what media arts are doing. Okay, so just quickly tell me what media arts would mean. So media arts are our students who are in um, broadcasting, audio engineering. Um, so we had, uh, we had Fairview High School presented a PSA that they had done and they had some students talk about uh, why they presented it and, and so that was a really nice piece to be able to include. That sounds neat. So we're going to include more arts for next year. Um, we're hoping the factory will sign on again. Hope so. There'll be lots more opportunities for little ones to get in front of their parents or their family and friends and then see the big kids so they know kind of where they're going. Um, is there any would you ever do a mini festival or would you expand to include, I don't know, maybe some, um, well, let's see, maybe some kids who've graduated from our district and maybe show some of their work? Well, you know. I really haven't thought about that. Well, there's, there's a lot of options moving forward. Um, one of the things that we did this year in selecting Bailey and the boys as our um, kind of our, our headliner concert was try to find a professional performer who had connections to Williamson County. So it would be neat to be able to continue bringing in people um, who, who do have those connections. So alumni is what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be neat to have a, an alumni piece of the festival. Yeah, I think that, you know, that's definitely something that, that could be a possibility. I'd love to even try to do some more hands-on kinds of activities. Um, I haven't thought at all completely through. I'm still recovering from the first time around. Yes, I know uh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, things, just things to get kids involved and, and let them try different things. That's a really And let the parents see it because, yes. you know, the parents don't get to get go to school with them. Um, and it may have been a while since they've been to their art class. <laughs> well, I bet it was really fun also, just as we wrap up, for parents and family and friends to, because, and I'm thinking really kind of of the little ones now, it's always neat to see them in their school, but how fun for those children to have the opportunity to come to another place, have all those people watching them, um, and perform in front of all those different people. I bet it was really fun for them. You know, I think so. I, um, I got a lot of feedback from teachers who communicated with their students afterwards that the kids really enjoyed it. And you know, one thing that's really unique about the arts is that it is a communication tool and, and it can't be done in isolation. And, and so this is an opportunity for students to complete that process of learning how to do it, spending the time developing that tool and then communicating it with somebody different somebody and and that audience is going to react so very differently than an audience made up of parents and peers oh i love that that is a great byproduct of the festival well melissa thank you so much for all your energy and all of your effort you really put this on um, on your own and uh, we are very grateful. Thank you to all the teachers as well and the parents that brought the little ones and the mm -hmm. kids who all came and and also to the folks who came to the factory um, probably by surprise <laughs> when they opened the door but how wonderful. This was really what it means to have the community involved in what we're doing with our kids so hats off to you and I look forward to um, to next year's and thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Next up we visit with Pam Bryant, President of the United Way of Williamson County, and Gail Powell, Executive Director of High Hopes. 
They will share their unique summer opportunity for budding social entrepreneurs in our high schools. Please stay with us. This is Money Matters. We will be right back. And welcome back to Money Matters. It's my great pleasure to be with two of our WCS ambassadors, and we're going to talk about this incredible program they have planned for this June for rising juniors and seniors. And we find ourselves right now at the United Way of Williamson County. So, welcome Gail Powell of High Hopes. Thank you, Deb. I'm glad to be here today. Great. And mm -hmm. thank you, Miss Pam Bryan, for your offices here at Thank the United you. Way. Well, let's get started. Okay, let's find out about, it's called Youth Philanthropy in Motion. Correct. What's that mean? Oh, uh, that means we are going to get several youth here in Williamson County engaged in a program that's looking at ways to create additional revenue for agencies. Oh, cool. All right. So, yes. hmm, let's see. You're going to get ki you're gonna get high school kids and they're going to learn about what? Well, this is, this is for rising juniors and seniors mm -hmm. at the high school level from Williamson County Schools. And uh, they're going to learn a lot about nonprofits, but also about how to help nonprofits with revenue. And actually, this started. Can we tell you how it started? Oh, I'd love that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, Pam and I were both ambassadors with mm -hmm. Williamson County Schools last year and we visited some of the most amazing students in the high schools. And so we were so impressed and we thought, okay, what, what would we like to give back to Williamson County Schools? And so we thought, we've got to unleash these kids on our agencies in Williamson County and get some help from, from them. Oh, I think that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to unleash them? What's, I guess, what, so what are they, what can they expect during this program? Yeah, well, we have great partnerships lined up. In uh, one day, they're going to be visiting the Belmont campus, and Dr. Bernard Turner is going to be taking them through the uh, social entrepreneurship courses that he teaches. Great. And we're really going to just help um, them to think about their ideas that they have and really visit with three different agencies and learn more about those agencies in ways, again, like Gail said, uh, to learn just about how they can help the three agencies uh, increase their funding streams. Okay, so what I'm hearing, if mm -hmm. I can just break it down to, uh, so right. I can understand it. Right. Um, so that when you're saying funding streams, mm -hmm. I know you guys, with all the work mm -hmm. that you do for High Hopes and United right. Way, mm -hmm. you're asking for money. Absolutely. And because to, to mm -hmm. fund the programs mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. facilities and all that. So, um, are kids supposed, is this a way for you folks to learn from the kids another way to make some money or? Well, it's going to be a mutual learning experience really because the students will be learning but we'll be learning too. And uh, we want them to learn more about what a nonprofit does because obviously United Way and High Hopes and um, other other agencies mm -hmm. who are partner agencies with United Way are nonprofits. So we want them to learn about nonprofits and Center for Nonprofit Management is sending an outstanding trainer. Wow. So great. they're going to get training that that many nonprofit leaders get. Mm -hmm. So they get to hear all that cutting edge knowledge about a nonprofit and what it means and how they run and how are they different from a business that might be for profit. Okay. So that will be day one. And then that afternoon they will meet the agencies that they'll be working with and yes we want them to give us some ideas we saw them we saw great ideas when we visited in their high schools I mean so we wanted to hear some of their ideas about some ways that we might think more like an entrepreneur as a nonprofit and what are some revenue streams that might come out of that creative thinking? Okay, so that means, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me see if I've got it. Okay. So that means maybe a product, kind of like the Tom's model, mm -hmm. okay, okay, and I know that's huge, but kind right. of like the Tom's model, or a service, like a collection of something, right, mm -hmm. to help people who, to make something more convenient, Correct. or maybe even a program where they might mm -hmm. devise some kind of program that would um, someone would have to pay to get or get into. Yes. Is, that, is that what we're talking yep. about? Yes. So yes. what we're trying to do is make sure that 
I think it's great. I mean, mm -hmm. nonprofit mm -hmm. work is wonderful. Mm -hmm. We all we all we all seem to enjoy yes. that very much. Mm -hmm. And I know you folks are real committed to your agencies. So how did you find the time <laughs> to think about putting something like this together? It truly all came about through being a part of the Williamson County Ambassador Program and just really learning um, how unique all the schools are and mm -hmm. what great ideas kids have uh, mm -hmm. already in the schools and just thinking we can take all that energy and just uh, it's worth every all the time we're putting into it but just to take their energy and to get them engaged with nonprofits and one of the key things that we talked about so many times when people look at Williamson County they don't think we have needs here and we really want the incoming juniors and seniors to realize how great the needs are here in yes. their own community yes. and how they can uh, implement all their energy and their wonderful ideas in helping people right here. And, and Deb, you may remember when you were at High Hopes, oh, mm -hmm. about a year ago maybe, maybe a little over a year ago, with one of our Williamson County High School students. And she fell in love with the mission there. And she said, oh, I want to go start one of these in Africa. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. We have needs here in Williamson County. And I think we just began to think, wow, let's, let's get some of that energy and that brilliance. And let's just let those kids come up with ideas that we may have we may be sitting here yeah, saying, absolutely. we never thought of that. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, so three mm -hmm. teams, mm -hmm. yes. and you're going to lead them through, it sounds like, four days of kind of understanding what it's about, even going on to Belmont's campus yep. and yes. having some of those uh, students who are in the social entrepreneur program talk with them mm -hmm. so they have a sense about what that is. They're going to know the agencies. Now tell me who the agencies are that the kids get to work with. Yeah, the, the three agencies, obviously, yes. is High Hopes and United Way, and then the third is Mercy uh, Community Healthcare. Right. Oh, great. Yeah. So broad spectrum. So yeah. we have right. children, we have health, and then we have an agency who yeah. helps a whole myriad of folks. Correct. Okay, and then you're going to just give them ways to understand what it might mean to put something together, right? right. A program or a service or a product. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, so they've got all these great ideas and these teams are real ginned up and they've mm -hmm. got some great stuff. What happens after that? I mean, do they get to present it or is anybody mm -hmm. gonna look at that mm -hmm. stuff? Uh, Friday will probably be the most exciting day and that's when they get to present their ideas to key community leaders here mm -hmm. in our community mm -hmm. and we put a lot of ask out there yet. We don't have a commitment from this team uh, but it, the kids will really enjoy this and this is really where they get to showcase the ideas they came up with. Okay so some of those folks are going to be CEOs of mm -hmm. and presidents mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. folks who even who may even launch some of these kinds of yes. things. Absolutely yes. and the students will be helped during the week by by Belmont and by Center for Nonprofit and by possibly some students who are in the social entrepreneur program at Belmont. Wow. And some of our teens who may sign up for this may not realize that there are actually majors out there that they can go and major in social entrepreneurism. Gosh, how neat that it's right down the street. It's right down the street. Yeah. And so we would have some of those students helping too and so they will come out with this business plan that they've written for High Hopes or for United Way. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and or for Mercy yeah. uh, Community Health. And so they'll present their plan on Friday. And I'm sure we will all just be thrilled with what they come up with. Yeah. So actually, what they present on Friday and have worked on all week long, and it sounds like it's pretty intensive, so it must be full day every day. It is. Right? It is. And mm -hmm. I suspect the teams will probably work offline as well, right? Oh, yeah. They'll have um, homework for sure. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. um, so on Friday, you guys might actually implement yes. what your yes. team, because yes. the team has been assigned yes. to one of you. Mm -hmm. Team of five. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. may mm -hmm. You may actually put that into your kind of portfolio, if you will, of fundraising. Yes. Isn't that incredible? Very oh my gosh, I'm excited for you. Very for the kids. I am too. That's I fantastic. I really am. I really am. I think that this, and this is so unique. I, mm -hmm. If this has been done at the high school level anywhere in the country, we don't know about it. Yeah, that's exciting but, but too. The, yeah. But the students here are the ones who were the inspiration yeah. for this. I love that. Yes. Oh, so we're in United Way. Is this where it's going to be housed or at yeah. High Hopes? or yeah. It's actually the chamber, the Williamson <gasps> County Chamber oh my uh, gosh. is providing us the, the training space. So we're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, how nice. Yeah. So the kids are also going to get a taste of yes. that Community. part because mm -hmm. I, I suspect you all would be able to help me with this. When kids think about what their career choices are going to be, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they necessarily align a nonprofit yeah. 
right, right. with going into business. But mm -hmm. I think what I'm learning from you folks is that indeed, mm -hmm. um, that's a very viable career for somebody yeah. who has a, a sense about s serving. Absolutely. It certainly is. And I, and I just think it's wonderful, mm -hmm. again, in our own backyard that we have schools who are helping kids, helping students be prepared to do that. Tell me how you got involved with High Hopes. Well, so why did you choose the nonprofit, I guess? Well, the mission. The mission for me, it, it, it's the bottom line. You know, the mission and knowing that we're serving children and youth, and uh, especially children and youth with special needs. And I think it was just the mission that, that sold me. And the great thing is that in a nonprofit, the bottom line is the mission. Yes. The bottom yes. line is not sure. making money. Yes. Although we run like a business. Right. But our bottom line is how do we advance this mission? How do we achieve these goals for our clients? Super. And for you, yes. very quickly, United yeah. Way. Uh, I was actually a loan executive in Huntsville, Alabama. How so I really got to see the um, true impact of the gift I gave back to the community through touring lots of the partner agencies that were there. I love that. So, yeah. all right. Very quickly, because I know the kids are going to say, well, okay, yes. or a, a mom or dad might right. be out there going, oh, yeah, this is, this is perfect for my mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. How do they get involved? Uh, they just need to contact Deb Enright okay. at the Williamson County School System. Okay. That's right. And the dates are June 16 through June 20th, 2014. And it's a full day for yes. five days. It is. So mm -hmm. at wcs.edu, they can find me, and we'll put that on the screen okay. so that, that they know good. exactly mm -hmm. how they can do that. And yeah. you guys will be there, is that right? Yes. Oh, yes. Every day. Every day. Oh, Every that day. is so exciting. Well, um, this is super. Yeah. I can can you think of like a bunch of kids who you know would really like to oh, do yes. this? Well, oh. We have a youth program, our YAC program, so we're already getting the kids very excited and making sure that they apply. Mm -hmm. Well, to be a part of this. Oh, that's wonderful. So, mm -hmm. promise you'll come back yes. when it's over. Maybe yes. even during we yeah. can see how it's going. But thank Absolutely. you both we so will. very thank much you. for doing that. We're thrilled. Mm -hmm. So, that's our Youth Philanthropy in Motion. I'm so excited about the program. And thank you to Gail Powell and to Pam Bryant for their time here on Money Matters. Thank you to all of our guests today. As you can see, it's about exposing our students to a variety of experiences so that each one of them becomes familiar with their own special talents and interests. The Fine Arts Festival provides a snapshot of how talented our students are from elementary through high school in music, theater, and the visual arts. As Melissa told us, the festival was successful because of community partnerships because of our parents and our neighbors supporting this great event. I cannot wait to see what happens at the festival next year. One thing for sure, it will grow and grow. Our ambassador program continues to bring unique and innovative partnerships to our students, providing interesting opportunities to experience the real world and begin to understand where certain career interests may lead them after high school. The youth Philanthropy in Motion program underscores just how creative working with WCS can be for our community partners with a great idea and a commitment to excellence. There is so much more we can provide for our students outside of the classroom, expanding their opportunities to learn. Our guests today show us that bringing together a variety of resources to bring a vision to reality is all it takes. And that's why money matters. That is our show for today. Thank you for watching and thank you as always to Daryl Thompson of Raymond James for his support of our show. My name is Deb Enright. This is Money Matters. See you next time.